Yo, what is good, YouTube? Welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Super Packs coming on Monday and how best to prepare for Super Packs for your squad specifically and whether or not, I guess, to a certain extent, they'll be worth opening as well. Before we hop into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help me push towards the 40,000 subscriber mark on the channel. I'm uploading every single day. Tons of consistent daily My Team content. Would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe. And without further ado, let's hop right into it. So, Super Packs in Season 1 created a market drop temporarily. They did. They were about the only thing, I would say, that has created a significant auction house, significant at all, auction house crash so far this year. And that's because every single older card from season one was available to be pulled again. Obviously, that's how the super packs work. They basically redrop every single promo card from the season and put them back into packs to be able to be pulled again, which means cards that are now currently almost non-existent will now be much more common again. For example, Dr. J came out the second week of the season. There are two of him on the auction house. My guess is when super packs happen, there will be 15 or 20 of him on the auction house again. Maybe not quite that many, but we can kind of assume that the pack odds on super packs will basically be slightly better than what season than than what the pack odds from earlier in the season have been. So I do have my video from season one pulled up here so you all can see we can look at it uh, that super pack odds in season one were 3.6, 3.6% diamond, 8.6% um, amethyst, which was slightly better than the packs than the up odds that we got pretty much the entirety of season one where diamond odds were only about one or two percent depending on the pack some of the friday drops were like 1.2 percent some of the uh or some of the tuesday drops i should say were that the friday drops were literally i think about 2.4 percent um somewhere in that too so 3.6 percent was an increase in the pack odds um now the pricing of super packs we can go back and look as well click over here and take a look uh for a 10 box it was 99,000, and for a 21 a 21 box which was um the um the obviously the 20 box that was worth that one was um 198,000, and that one had was it an amethyst here let's click right here so it says that's the 10 box the 20 box guaranteed an amethyst or higher my guess is that the 20 box will now guarantee a diamond or higher here in season two as the bundle topper um i'd be surprised if it's amethyst or higher i mean don't put anything past 2k but i'd be pretty shocked at this point if the bundle topper was only an amethyst plus with the amount of pink diamonds and now on to galaxy opals that they have started dropping in packs so what that means is that i would estimate if we look at pack odds right now pack odds for the last couple of weeks have continued to go up a bit in terms of the um the pink diamond odds and the diamond odds 12 point 12 percent odds for a diamond right now and then 2.1 percent odds at a pink diamond in these aura deluxe packs the regular aura packs have 1.1 percent odds at a 95 plus and 4.1 percent odds at a 92 plus my guess is that this is the highest the diamond odds have been all season is 12 percent out of these deluxe packs my guess is that the pack odds for the super packs will probably have similar diamond odds and pink diamond odds to these deluxe packs maybe slightly higher somewhere around i think at best 15 percent diamond and three to four percent pink diamond i think that's the best case scenario realistically i'd be surprised if it's any higher than that it might be slightly lower it might be somewhere around these deluxe pack odds because these are about the best odds that we've seen all season for these packs like the greatest era packs right now have a 1.3 percent chance at a pink diamond i would assume it'll be around two to three percent for pink diamond maybe four max or i guess it theoretically could be five but i'd be surprised if it's that high uh, i don't think it'll be that high and then somewhere between 10 to 15 percent on the diamond odds um for season two super packs like obviously i don't know exactly what the odds are going to look like but that would be my estimation so probably all things considered they will be in theory the best value packs of the season um they will also probably have a super bundle just like these aura bundles but it'll be a super pack bundle for seventy five thousand um vc8 it'll have slightly better odds as well than what these bundles have so somewhere honestly probably some pretty similar to this 10 percent odds at a pink diamond about 50 percent odds at a diamond that seems pretty realistic to be completely honest but i do think value wise they will in theory be the best value packs that you could open this season because the price of these box is going to be the same as the price of the regular non-deluxe 10 box and 20 box um which is going to guarantee you cards from season two instead of getting a lot of like series one cards and things of that nature um which is going to be good and the pack odds will be higher than the pack odds on the normal standard boxes where right now they're one and four percent it'll be higher for both the diamond and pink diamond odds than this so if you're going to spend money look i'm going to not spend money and i am at this point encouraging everybody to not spend money but i know how people are people are going to spend money on the game 
no matter what I say, no matter what 2K does at the end of the day, it seems like people are just going to spend money regardless. So if that's the case, I mean, super packs are probably going to be the best place to do it. And what that means is more importantly, like I don't, I'm not going to encourage you to open these packs. I don't think it's a good idea to open these packs. I think the value is still pretty bad for the money that you're putting in. I think you're better off putting your money. If you're going to spend it on something, spend it on something that's a little more useful in real life than virtual cars, especially with how much money it costs to often pull good stuff and keep up with the best squad. But People are going to open super packs. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's going to happen, and they're going to open a lot of super packs. It's going to be the most opened pack of the season, except for maybe the Dia de los Martes pack. That was opened a ton because of the SGA event, as well as because Wimby was in packs. But with the exception of this Dia de los Muertos pa packs, I do believe this will be the most open packs. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're open even more than the Dia de los Muertos events, which means that we're going to see a lot of these cards pulled. So if you are an owner, especially of like a base Dr. J, a base Zach Levine, a base Victor Wimbanyama, um, cards that are really desirable. Paulo Boncaro is a diamond. Um, let's see, what other pink diamonds? Hakeem and Kawhi. None of those pink diamonds are all that desirable in my opinion, but Magic maybe. He's not, nah, nah, the most recent pink diamond is not quite as much. Maybe Harden and Granger, although those guys just got put in packs. So not them as much, but especially I feel like the, the Wimbies and the Jarens and the Dr. J's and the Paulos and the Zach Levines, the most desirable cards from season one um, are like, or from season two, I should say, are likely going to be much more common on the auction house. And therefore, I would personally say you will probably make MT profit if you sell your card today and buy them back like Monday afternoon once super packs are out because there will be a higher supply of cards on the auction house, which should, in theory, if it did anything like season one, it will drop the prices of these cards a decent bit. For example, Dr. J is generally going for about a million plus MT right now. Would not be shocked to see him be in the seven or 800,000 MT range. Like, I feel like you can make a little bit of profit by selling cards now. And that even goes for lower tier cards. Selling them now when they're rarer and buying them back when they're more common because people are going, especially like the lower tier cards. Like if you are, for example, owning a DeJounte Murray with some extra Hall of Fame badges, that's just a theoretical option. But you have a DeJounte Murray and you can sell him for 100 or even if he's got an extra Hall of Fame badges, a little bit over 100 KMT. He's probably going to be like, 80k MT, 70k MT on on um on Monday. So what that means is number one, now is probably the best time to sell cards if you're trying to make MT and have MT flexibility. It, honestly, even earlier this week would have been an even better time probably, but like today is probably the best time to do that. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit too late and you're not going to get as much of the price benefit from selling your cards. But more importantly, if you have MT, Monday afternoon is going to be the best time to buy cards if you are trying to target cards to pick up for your squad. If you have 800,000 MT saved up and you want to get Wimby, Monday's going to be your best chance to do that because he will probably drop in price a little. I'm not sure he's going to be 800K. I mean, they're all ending over a million, right? But he might be, he might dip under a million on Monday. Would not be surprised at all if he did. And that's going to be the best opportunity to pick up the most desirable cards from season two. Again, guys like Wimby and Paulo and Dr. J and Jaron and Zach Levine, et cetera, et cetera. Any cards that you've been targeting from season two, your best bet to get them for a relatively decent price and for a discounted price, if nothing else, is going to be on Monday. So keep that in mind with your MT, with the cards that you currently have in your collection and that type of stuff and decide how you want to handle your, your collection. But hopefully this video does give you all some decent advice for what's coming with these super packs and how to approach it with your lineup. So with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope y'all did enjoy. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. I appreciate y'all. Peace.